or in this video we're going to try to answer the question what is DBM or DBMU or DBMV and uh, why do we use these various units on a spectrum analyzer now of course to answer that question uh, the first uh, question we need to address ourselves with is what is a DB a DB or a decibel is a logarithmic expression of the ratio of two power levels and uh, the general equation is just like this it's ten times the log base ten of the ratio between two power levels we'll call it P1 and P2 it's important to note that it's the logarithm base ten not the natural log which on your calculator is typically LN it's usually spelled out the capital letters LOG for the uh, log base 10. So we're going to answer the question what is a DB and uh, why do we use them and uh, how can you relate them to things like volts and watts and things like that that you're used to looking at or uh, dealing with with an oscilloscope. In electronics the definition for a decibel or a DB is a 10 times the log of the ratio of two power levels not voltage levels but power levels so um, we can kind of look at it this way as a couple of examples. So let's say P1 is a quantity of 1, say 1 watt, P2 is 1 watt. The ratio between them is 1. If you punch that into your calculator, uh, the log of the value 1 gives you 0. So 0 times 10 is 0. Let's say that uh, P P1 was twice the value of P2. The ratio would then be 2. And that would be 3 dB if you do that in your calculator. If P1 was 10 times the value of P2, the ratio would be 10, and that would be 10 dB. Now, here's a, if, let's say the, that P1 was one half the value of uh, P2, then the ratio would be one half, and that would be minus 3 dB. So what you can see here is that a factor of 2 increase was a plus 3 dB, a factor of 2 decrease, or one half, uh, was minus 3 dB. So just take some oddball numbers like 7.2 for P1, 1.6 for P2, the ratio is 4.5 and if you punch that into your calculator you get 6.5 dB is the, is the ratio between these two power levels. So a couple of other interesting things is if you take a look at say, let's say that P1 was 100 times P2, that would be 20 dB. A thousand times that's 30 dB. So you can see for these three cases, say from 10 to 100 to 1,000, we multiply by 10, 10, 10. So we go from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000. Each of those is multiplying by 10, but the dB values increase linearly by 10. So 10, 20, and 30. So uh, one way to think about that is that logarithms will turn multiplication and division into an addition and subtraction. That's kind of the reason why we use logarithms years and years ago before we had calculators. Okay. The other convenient thing about this is that logarithms can be used uh, so to express or to view large variations in ratios and to be able to see them on a reasonable scale. Uh, we, can, uh, we can see, for example, that we have a ratio of 10 to 1 or 100 to 1. When we view them on the same scale, it's just going from you know, 0 to 10 to 20 to 30. Um, so even if we had a thousand to one ratio, uh, we wanted to look also at another quantity that had a hundred to one ratio, we could see them on the same scale very easily. And we'll see if we try to look at things linearly without using uh, this logarithm expression, that um, that would be very tough to see. We're going to look at the, uh, the scope in a little while, and you'll see a really good example of that. So here's a quick example of how these large variations in ratios can be expressed on a reasonable scale. Uh, on an oscilloscope, the vertical axis, so the, the displayed voltage is linear. So I've got a, a sine wave here, and if I reduce its amplitude by 10 dB, we can see that uh, how small that signal got. If I reduce it by another 10 dB, okay, now I can still see it. If I reduce it by another 10 dB, so that's 30 dB lower, and I can just barely see it. If I go to say 40 dB, I can't even see that change on this same scale. Okay, so 
you know, I can really get, you know, typically about 30 dB, maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit more on a scope screen to be able to see that on the same scale. Let's move the signal over to the spectrum analyzer. I'll turn the spectrum analyzer on and turn the uh, time domain off. So there's that signal represented in the frequency domain on a spectrum analyzer. If I cut its amplitude by 10 dB, all right, I can still see it very easily. 20 dB, 30 dB, even 40 dB, very easy to see uh, that signal still on the screen. So even if I go 50 dB, 60 dB, or even 70 dB, 70 dB is starting to be way down in the noise there, but that is now 70 dB is a factor of 10 million. Okay, so I've made that signal 10 million times lower in power, and I can still see it. There'd be no way to see that on an oscilloscope screen. So this is why dBs are used when looking on a spectrum analyzer, because it allows us to view maybe large signals in the presence of, or excuse me, be able to simultaneously view large signals and small signals on the same scale, even if the power of those signals varies by a uh, tremendous amount. So we can see if this signal was sitting up here at full power, if I had another signal that was sitting down here, 60 dB down, I'd be able to see that, which would be very, very difficult or impossible to do if the scale was linear. So that's why we use dB. So let's look at a couple of examples of how we use them and where some of these other units come from like dBm and dBu and, and that kind of thing. Now we stated earlier that uh, since a dB is a ratio it's not an absolute quantity like a watt or a volt. So for example we can say that hey this signal that we're looking at is 3 dB greater than that one okay because that's a ratio but we cannot say that this signal is 3 dB that doesn't make any sense because dB isn't a unit or isn't an absolute value. dB is always a ratio. So how do we use it to measure absolute quantities? So in order to measure an absolute quantity, we must specify or imply a reference, like we did here, saying 3 dB greater than some value. All right. So an example, we can always say that, hey, this signal is twice as big as X, or this signal is half the size of Y. All right knowing the reference, okay, the ratio then becomes an absolute value because if we know what this value is, if this signal is twice as big of it, we know how big that signal is. So once we know the reference or we imply a reference, okay, then we can turn a dB into essentially an absolute value. And uh, this is where the suffix comes in on uh, the dBs. So when you see, say, dBm, that's implying that the reference is a milliwatt. When you see dBu, it's implying the reference is a microwatt. And typically, the W is omitted. If the, you know, with that being omitted, the, uh, the assumption is, and uh, the convention is, is that we're talking about power, so that would be watts. If you see, you know, typically if you're not going to be specifying a reference as a power level in watts, but you're going to express it in volts, then that typically would show up here. So dBmV, the reference is a millivolt. So we're going to say that this signal is x times larger than a millivolt, or x times smaller than a microwatt, or x times larger or smaller than a milliwatt. So um, the suffix then can turn a dB into an absolute quantity, like dBm. So dBm is an absolute quantity that says we're going to, this power level is x times larger or smaller than a milliwatt so we can calculate that, that out to a specific quantity. So that's where these particular values come in. So let's run some examples on the instrument and uh, show you what we're talking about. Okay, let's use this example that we have on the screen. This is a 10 megahertz signal that's uh, measuring uh, just about 950 millivolts peak to peak. So if we run that calculation, that 10 megahertz uh, signal at 950 millivolts peak to peak, it is being terminated into uh, 50 ohms. And that's kind of an important thing too, and we're going to be measuring and comparing power levels. They all have to be with respect to the same load. So in this case, we're going to consider 50 ohms. So if the peak to peak voltage is 950 millivolts, we need to calculate the RMS voltage in order to calculate power.
So that's simply the peak to peak voltage divided by 2 times the square root of 2. So if we do that calculation, the RMS voltage is 336 millivolts. Therefore, the power in the 50 ohm load is equal to the RMS voltage squared divided by the load resistance. So that's 0.336 squared divided by 50, or 2.256 milliwatts. So to express this value in dBm, the reference is a milliwatt. So we basically say the value in dBm is equal to 10 times the log of 2.256 milliwatts divided by a milliwatt. That's our reference. And that gives us 3.53 dBm. So let's see if that will, that's what we have. We'll move the signal over to the spectrum analyzer input and turn the spectrum analyzer on. We'll turn off the analog trace. And uh, so there's the, uh, the signal we're seeing on the scope. We take a look at the measurement. There it is, right at uh, 3.5 dBm. That's pretty darn close, 0 0.03 dBm uh, different. But uh, So that uh, is basically what our answer is. If we want to express that value in dBu, or dB relative to a microwatt, then we would just run the calculation here to say it's 10 times the log of 2.256 times 10 to the minus 3, that's milliwatts, divided by a microwatt, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 6, and that would give us 33.53 dBm. So we'll hit the amplitude key here, change the vertical units. I'll use the uh, knob here to change that to dB microwatts, or dBu. If we take a look, there we are, 33.5, and we expected 33.53. That's basically the same number. So now you can see how those numbers relate to the voltage that we measured on the scope. So what about comparing voltage ratios? Can we use dBs for that? Well, a dB, like I said, by definition, uh, relates to power. So we have to calculate it against power, but uh, we can still kind of do this. So here's how it works. So if we're going to you know, compare power levels, we're going to basically take the voltages of interest and compute the power. So uh, the power from voltage number 1 is V1 squared divided by R. The power of our reference value is V2 squared over R. And we're going to assume an equal R uh, for, this, for this video, which is almost always the case. So let's simplify this equation. So when you have you know, a fraction over a fraction, you can invert and multiply. So that's the same as 10 times the log of V1 squared over R times R over V2 squared. The R's cancel out, so you're left with 10 times the log of V1 squared over V2 squared. Uh, that's the same as 10 times the log of V1 over V2, that whole quantity squared. Now you may remember from your uh, high school algebra that uh, when you have the logarithm of a quantity that has an exponent, the exponent can come outside and multiply against the front. So that would be the same as having 2 times 10 times log of V1 over V2. And that's why we wind up seeing the expression when we're computing uh, logs with respect to voltages, where it's 20 times the log when you're comparing a voltage ratio. It's 10 times the log when you do a power ratio, 20 times the log doing a voltage ratio. And again, this is all assuming an equal load impedance, okay, the equal R. All right. Now in our case, we have this 950 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal, uh, and that can be expressed, say, in dB relative to a millivolt, or dBmV. We have to compute the, you know, use the RMS value that we computed on the previous uh, page. So we say the dBmV is 20 times the log of the RMS value of that, which is 336 millivolts, divided by a millivolt, and that gives us 50.25 dBmV. Let's take a look. Let's change the unit here. Uh, we were looking at uh, about 3.5 dBm before. Let's uh, move this unit down to dBmV, and uh, we're looking at uh, 50.5 dBmV, and that's basically what we calculated. So you may ask, well, what about dBc? You know, I, uh, I always see dBc when we're talking about spectrum analyzers. What does that mean? What's the reference there? Uh, well, dBc basically means that it's decibels relative to some carrier power level. Now, this is very, very common in RF applications because what this might do is to say, how, how large is a distortion component with respect to my main signal? 
Okay, so we often will call that dBc or dB relative to a carrier level. Let's take a look at how we might use that on this analyzer here. So I've got this signal coming in here that's at uh, you know 10 megahertz, about three and a half dBm, and uh, let's change the span. I'm going to change my stop frequency here out to 30 megahertz, and uh, in doing that, what I can see now is I see the my fundamental signal here, okay, 10 megahertz uh, plus 3.5 dBm. And I also see, if I look carefully here, I can see there's a uh, another tone down here. It's actually the second harmonic coming out of my signal generator. And that guy is down at, uh, oh, minus 53, minus 53, minus 54 dBm or so. So that's the absolute power level of it. But what might, what might be important to me is how far down is that with respect to my carrier. Uh, we can set the markers up here to be relative reading markers. So if I set that to be an, a relative or delta reading marker, what that will do is it'll take this measurement here, okay, as my reference level, and now when I go to make the other measurement here, it shows it me shows it to me as dBc. Uh, dBc means it's decibels relative to the carrier, which is my uh, reference point over here. So it tells me that the second harmonic is in this case about 57 dB down from the carrier. And that's typically what we'll need to know. We'll typically use the absolute value for the carrier measurement and then use relative values or dBc values to look at other components with respect to our carrier level. So that's what dBc means. It's looking at other power levels with respect to some other level that you might be looking at as your reference on screen. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of an idea of what the various amplitude uh, units are that you'll find on a spectrum analyzer and why we use uh, decibels in the first place or a logarithmic uh, representation of amplitude on a spectrum analyzer. You know, the spectrum analyzer gives us so much dynamic range, it makes it easy to see signals that are a million times or ten million times lower in power um, than another signal, for example. And that would be impossible to see on the linear display that you get on an oscilloscope screen. So um, we use uh, this logarithmic representation of the power level uh, to make it easy to visualize these things with respect to each other. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and uh, see you later.